Can you see? Yeah. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so I think the most important thing uh, in this uh, semester for all of you is this very flyer. <laughs> So okay. uh, that will be the final presentation on uh, December 14, 2020. And so we will have it uh, at 1 p.m. We will begin it at 1 p.m. And uh, please go to the Google Drive folder and um, register yourself, sign up yourself for the, for the class for the presentation, then I know uh, how many of you are joining us. And we do have uh, uh, also uh, I just wanted to know if everyone has the access to Google Drive folder, OK? And to those things, I will come back a little later also. And if you have any question, just uh, chat me here. And we do have a chat. And uh, here we can go to, we can chat with everyone. Or if you go to uh, personal chat, you can also chat me personally if you need something that you want to um, ask any question. Please make sure um, this week we have to um, make everything clear. So I hope. Uh, you will be able to uh, use this time. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I hope I hope it's clear to you now. <clears throat> um, so um, next week at uh, one p.m. Uh, is that uh, time okay for all of you? All right. Okay. And here we have a reaction button. You can see that. Can you see? Okay. If you if you like, you can give it the thumbs up. <laughs> right. <laughs> So you know, okay, you are good with that timing. And that is um, 1 p.m. Uh, next Monday. And I would like to congratulate all of you for almost complete, completing. And, uh, and also I would like to wish you all the best for your finals next week. So we need to have a presentation, seven minutes, okay? And then uh, we also have a paper, a research paper, that is a 10 page uh, research paper. And that does not include the, the cover page and the, the references, okay? That should be separate. And if you have any difficulty, just do let me know. I'm also going to demonstrate uh, how uh, to include the footnotes uh, or in notes or bibliography for those people who are not so compatible um, with that. Uh, if you're not com um, comfortable, I will show you how to do that. And uh, if you still have any question, uh, please feel free to uh, let me know. This is uh, my phone number and email uh, uh, with you, I hope. And hopefully you can um, we can be in touch. Okay, so with that being said, let's get started with the Google Drive folder. I will go there right away. And this is our Google Drive folder for the week 10. And this is the Google Drive folders. Uh, for the week nine. And uh, in the week nine folder, um, maybe I will uh, start with this. This is the, the syllabus, number one. And over here, uh, over 
here we can see the last class prior to our final examination, the spread of Buddhist thought and philosophy along the maritime silk uh, road. And, and then uh, I just want to open it up for you. And here, <clears throat> uh, this one, please make a copy of this, okay? And you can all copy this one and uh, just check mark and then uh, paste it uh, in a different document in your own folder. That will be very useful. So you yourself know uh, exactly where you are. Just in case you could not do the midterm presentation uh, here, uh, this one research paper uh, just five paper, five page uh, research paper uh, would be accepted. Um, if you have any question on any of these things, uh, do, just do let me know. So today we have a simple reflection paper and a video comment and a guided meditation again optional. And these things uh, will be uh, the key today. And yeah, these are the guided meditation sessions. I have a list of uh, guided meditation for those people who could not complete some uh, assignment so I can maybe cover up uh, for you. So just uh, take a look. And then the, uh, yeah, this is the live meeting Zoom. I think we don't need that. Yeah, we don't need that. Okay, and then the assignments. I would like to open it up for you. And <clears throat> so here, read the uh, read any of the articles or books given in the week nine reading materials folder and write at least one page reflection. Skip the ones that you selected in the previous weeks, if any. And I will show you those uh, books and articles a little later, immediately after this. And watch any of these videos and write a summary. Skip the ones that you have selected in the previous weeks, if any. And these are some of the, and just uh, have a look and uh, give it a summary or something. And watch this Sutta study video and leave a comment. Uh, and that also actually to enhance because some of you wanted to learn um, more about, I know, but uh, for beginners, uh, I heard uh, for some students, they find it a little hard. Um, so we just uh, share these Dhamma thoughts with uh, everyone. So you can also have a look. And these are our Saturday guided uh, meditation sessions through um, Dhamma USA YouTube channel if you want to join us on Saturday at uh, 6 a.m. And here's the, the reading materials folder. And I actually went through uh, all my articles. I have a, a long list of articles. Then I went through them and I selected some for you. I tried to cover up. Uh, different areas of Buddhism, especially with regard to our topic. So archaeology and empire, uh, Buddhist um, monument, this is about uh, archaeology. And then uh, Buddhism in Indonesia, the current issues, Buddhism in Tibetan history, Buddhist, uh, Buddhist connections in the Indian Ocean, uh, Buddhist historiography, historiography, Thailand, and Buddhist thought, a complete uh, introduction. I think this will also be a very handy book. And early Buddhism uh, definition, early Buddhist teachings, uh, these books will also be helpful to you um, if you want to learn a little bit more about uh, just a, um, an overlook of uh, uh, Buddhist teaching. An early historic uh, Gujarat and trading, I think this one also will be very useful for us because uh, we are talking about the maritime trading and how those uh, uh, early days, those people 
have used uh, uh, trading. Early historical and archaeological trade, so again about the trading. And early Mahayana Buddhism also is very important. Uh, here we have about uh, early Theravada Buddhism. I also selected uh, a book on uh, early Mahayana Buddhism. I know we have a lot of friends from Mahayana Buddhist countries. And <clears throat> Encyclopedia of Buddhism will also cover up if any missing article or missing information, uh, if you need to know. I hope uh, including of this book uh, will also help you. An expansion of Buddhism during the Mauryas. Maurya is uh, actually Ashoka's period. So those Ashokan kings, uh, his lineage is called Maurya. Uh, so uh, we have uh, how um, King Ashoka has sent missionaries to nine different destinations in the world. So it's an interesting um, uh, detail here. And linking and Khotan and Dunghuan, uh, Buddhists, uh, and this is about the, again, in uh, China, how uh, through the Silk Road, uh, how those Buddhist travelers went and in um, these different caves and beautiful uh, Buddhist art and paintings uh, are there for all of us to learn about the flourishing Buddhism uh, in that uh, part of the world. Sri Lankan Buddhism, uh, a short history. So if you want to learn about Sri Lankan Buddhism, you have another uh, the text here. And then uh, uh, the structure of monks order, again, uh, this one, uh, how uh, the monks are uh, as organized uh, institution how they are structured, you can learn these things. And exporting dharma to new lands, uh, empirical. And again, this is about the expansion of Buddhism uh, to different parts of the world. Yes, uh, with regard to the question uh, by um, you, yes, you can use any of these articles, any of these books. In fact, not only these books, but also in the previous weeks, uh, if you are interested in um, selecting any of the topics and if any of these books um, are helpful to you, you are welcome to use them. And I'm going to show you how we actually use them in our uh, texts. Uh, let's say, let's, uh, let's open this one first. Okay, this is actually um, a, a paper Indian Economic and Social History Review, uh, a journal paper, uh, Archaeology and Empire Buddhist Monuments uh, in Monsoon Asia. Himanshu Prabhare, he is a professor of uh, Center of Historical um, uh, Studies, JNU, one of the prestigious universities in India. And in this um, uh, book, he talks about this one. I think this is a little abstract will help you to grasp uh, the overall picture of the article. In this paper, largely based on archaeological data, I argue that colonial intervention between 18th and 20th centuries in South and Southeast Asia not only uh, altered the nature of uh, linkages that had existed across Asia for at least the middle of the first millennium BC onward, but most significantly redefine our understanding of monuments, essentially religious structures from being abodes of spiritual power to objects of artistic aesthetic appreciation. This had far reaching implications for the study and understanding of the nature of Indic religions. And here I focus on Buddhism. The paper highlights changes introduced as a result of colonial intervention in three major monuments of South and Southeast Asia. Um, that is Bod Bodhgaya uh, in Eastern India, Borobudur in Central Java, and Angkor Complex in uh, Cambodia. So this is how he's uh, covering up uh, this article on 
archaeology and empire, uh, archaeology and empire, Buddhist monuments in uh, monsoon Asia. It's actually a rather recent uh, history, 18th and 20th centuries, but it will give you some uh, insight into um, the colonial uh, period, how um, uh, Buddhism uh, was uh, flourishing in that period, the, the, uh, the, in that period, and also how it has been impacted by those uh, colonial rulers. And this archaeological survey of India gives uh, really very powerful uh, information. And then Thomas uh, Stafford Raffles and the history of Java. So this is about Indonesia. If any of you are from Indonesia or that part of the world, you can also have a look. And then Cambodia, the French prototype. And this is actually a uh, protectorate. So Cambodia has uh, uh, also um, very important um, Angkor Wat. And that is one of the, I, I think that is the, the largest uh, Buddhist temple in the world, Angkor Wat. So these uh, monuments, uh, these historical archeological uh, ruins are very important. And then the European discovery of Buddhism because uh, those colonial rulers also uh, did some uh, researches. Their investigations uh, actually revealed a really remarkable piece of information and that uh, really opened up the eyes of the Western world uh, about uh, Buddhism in Asia. Um, so monuments of uh, reverence, uh, for example, Bodh Gaya, where the, uh, the Prince Siddhartha or the ascetic Gautama achieved his enlightenment. And it is a uh, UNESCO declared World Heritage Site. It's a very powerful place. Um, all the Buddhist people are supposed to uh, pay a visit uh, there. It's a really a uh, very uh, unique uh, place. And then Borobudur, this is in uh, um, Indonesia. And, and then he also talks about, uh, I think Angkor Wat in, um, yeah, here, Angkor. These are beautiful um, places um, of Buddhist, history, if we talk about the Buddhist history, they are very yeah, important. So, and also at the end of it, uh, I just want to show you how um, in your, uh, I just opened it also for you to have a good look at how we write a paper. And you can see at the beginning, there was an abstract. And, and then we have the, uh, the article beautifully segmented into uh, different sections. And then we have primary sources. Okay, here we can see primary sources, National Archives of India. These are primary sources. And then secondary sources. So these are the, uh, the books and articles that people have written. Uh, these are um, more important documents if we take as uh, primary sources. For example, if you talk about uh, uh, Buddhist history, if you use any of the suttas, they actually become uh, primary sources. And the people who have written about those uh, suttas, uh, they, can, they can come under secondary sources. You can also see here the, the alphabetical order. So all these things, uh, little information, uh, can be pretty useful to you. And I show you how we, uh, okay, uh, for example, here you can see uh, Kinad Jacob N, uh, and then Kinad, Kama, and Jacob N, Dad, and Kama. And then here, when the Buddha sued uh, Vishnu, and this is actually an article. So it is given within uh, court. And then Kama, John Clifford Hall, Jacob N. Kinnard. These are the, um, the editors uh, of this journal. And then constituting communities, uh, Theravada Buddhism and the religious cultures of South and Southeast Asia. So this is the name, this is the title 
of that uh, uh, magazine. Okay, and now you can see here we have the article and here we have the title and these uh, are the people who edited uh, the book. And then we have um, State uh, University of New York Press. This is the, uh, the place of publication. Um, I mean, this is the publisher. And Albany is the place of publication. And 2003 is the year of publication. And 85 to uh, 106, these are the page numbers. So uh, this, the, uh, within these uh, page numbers, we do have this article called When the Buddha Sued uh, Vishnu. So if you cite um, in a, a journal article, this is how you uh, cite in your, now this is how you give your information in the bibliography. Okay, let me see if I can find a book um, over here. Yes, this is a book. Uh, Cartoon and Close. Okay, this is the, the last name and the first name. And India and the Hellenistic World. This is the title of the book. And you can see here, the, the title of the book is in italic. Okay, this is how you do. When you use a title of the book, you can use it as italic. Then um, the academic world knows that it is the title of the book. And then comma, this, all this little information important here. Um, and then we have Helen, Hel Helsinki. Uh, this is the, the place of publication. And 1997, uh, it is the year of publication. Still missing some information here. In fact, I will go to a better um, one with more information. I guess this one. Uh, let me see. Yeah, we also have these uh, like uh, volumes, volume 62, number four and four. And this again is a journal uh, magazine. So we have a series of them. Uh, uh, where's the page number? Okay, this one. Uh, Malandra Gary H, the Mahabodhi Temple. Oh, yeah, this again is a title, um, journal article. Um, okay, maybe this one. Uh, we don't have, okay, I got it. So why don't we have the page numbers here? Definitely we don't have because this is the end of the, um, so this one is a book. Uh, Mixik John Borobudur. Uh, Borobudur Golden Tales of the Buddha. So this is the title. And Periplus Editions, this is the publisher. Berkeley, this is the Berkeley and Singapore. These are the places of um, publication. And 1990 is the year of publication. So one, the, the editor, uh, the author of the, um, the book, and then the title of the book, and then uh, the publisher name of the publisher and then the place of the publisher and then the year of the publisher. This information uh, should be included into your bibliography. Okay. Let me see if I can find any uh, any footnote. I, I think I didn't find any footnote. So, okay. Yeah. So later I will show you. And let's go to the other one. Uh, that is Buddhism in Indonesia, the, uh, this is, okay, this one is a, um, a wonderful book. This is IABU, uh, International Association of Buddhist uh, Universities, Teaching Dharma in uh, Dharma in New, uh, new Lands. Uh, I, I guess this one also can be very helpful to us. There are some articles the, this is a collection of articles. You can see the page numbers here, 384 pages. So we can uh, see they are academic papers presented at the second IB, IABU conference, Mahachula Langkor University, actually, in Thailand, Ayutthaya. 
And here I can show you some uh, articles that can be, uh, okay. Yes, this is the, the list of articles that we have in this um, journal. Uh, maintaining the Vihara inside the Muslim society. Uh, study on the Vihara Kuang in Thang in uh, Pamulang, uh, Bantam province, Indonesia. And then Buddhism in Indonesia, the current issues of development of Buddhism in modern Muslim. Uh, the social role of chanting tradition in, in Indonesia, Buddhist society. Buddhist women and polygamy issue in Indonesia. Bhikkhu Ashin uh, Jinarakita's interpreting and translating Buddhism in Indonesian cultural and political context. Um, here again, uh, stuffering, Dhamma seeds and videotape, equity, interdependence and culture in struggles for African uh, liberation, Kakendo. Uh, and uh, trials and tribulations of teaching Dhamma in Uganda. Interesting uh, uh, story about Buddhism in Africa. Uh, the Beatnik Buddhist, the monk of American pop culture. Okay, interesting article again. Teaching Dharma in US. Uh, uh, Buddhist practice within an environment of concrete and still. Okay, so concrete and steel, you can see uh, Buddhism in, uh, in the, the modern urban areas. Thai American Buddhist encounters with white privilege and white uh, supremacy. Challenges uh, Sri Lankan monks face in disseminating Dhamma to children in the US. I think uh, every other community would have the same issue. Um, also, not only Buddhism, but also with the other religions, whosoever people migrated to U.S., and they would all, always like to um, promote their culture among the children who are born here, and then there would always be challenges for them. Uh, this article also is an important one. Uh, a friend of mine has written this article. And here, bridging society and Buddhism through a woman's role in teaching the Dhamma in depicted and selected visual artworks from Sri Lanka. And Dharma in action, the gift of Western female Dharma teachers. And uh, Buddha and the new atheists on the art of teaching the Dharma in the Bible belt. Um, Exporting dharma to the new lands, empirical approaches to teaching dharma in predominantly non-Buddhist states. Uh, interesting article again. The dharma in Spanish-speaking countries. Okay. Societal relevance and uh, place uh, of Buddhism in France. Just want to talk about this dharma. This is a Pali word, and I think you are more familiar with the word dharma, which is a Sanskrit term. So in this case, uh, this is about uh, Buddhist uh, teachings. The most outstanding Bhikshuni contribution of education in contemporary China. Okay, uh, good one again, Ru Jing Mao. And uh, Pramaha Sambon, Sambon uh, Vutikaro uh, writes an article on Buddhist tolerance for peaceful coexistence of Asian nations and teaching Buddhism by understanding uh, the phenomena of nature. So these are all, um, you can have a look, uh, find something if you, find, um, if you think uh, uh, which is important uh, to your uh, research paper, okay? And next one is uh, Buddhism in Tibetan history. And if any of you are working on Tibetan Buddhism, this one will be uh, uh, somewhat useful. Okay, here I think I can show you. Oh, this is not a. This is not a footnote. I'll show you a footnote. I want to actually show you how to do that also. I hope you know some of you. Resurgence of Buddhism after the Tibetan Empire. So um, this article is 21 page. 
and age of translation and assimilation, and also Sakya uh, Pa, I think Sakya Pa dominance under Mongol, Mongol um, influence. I know we have some Mongolian students. They would find this information useful. Um, uh, can anyone actually um, pronounce this word? Saskia, is that correct? Do we have some Mongolian students here? This word, can you see that? So it looks like the uh, Buddha's uh, clan also Sakya. So I think there should definitely be a connection between that and this uh, word. Let me know if uh, that is the correct one. And uh, Tibetan Buddhism, Buddhist scholasticism during shifting hegemonies. So this is like uh, 1300, 1400 impact. Okay, so this uh, article will also give you some uh, information. The rise of the Gay uh, Lagspa and the age of Dalai Lamas. Uh, do you remember the, the present Dalai Lama? Or what number is he? Can you text? Which Dalai Lama is now we have? 14. 14th? 14th Dalai Lama, right? Okay, great. So Dalai yes. Lama is from uh, Dalai Lama is from uh, Kag yes. Kagyo. Uh, which tradition? Which school? Is that uh, we have four schools, right? A uh, Gelupa, right? Dalai oh, Lama the, is from uh, school, like uh, um, the, I think the biggest one is uh, a Nyingma, right? Uh, that is the largest one. And Gelukpa is Dalai Lama's uh, tradition, right? School? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 13 yeah. Dalai Lama, 1876 to 1933. And our current Dalai Lama, 14 Dalai Lama, um, he was born 1935, and yeah, I have met him in uh, India, and I also met him here in uh, um, U.S. last time he came for a, a temple opening, and these are the references. So uh, by looking at the references, you can also get some idea. Actually, you you can see. Uh, it's important to see these, read these articles, especially the most uh, current articles. If you read, you will get uh, the, the articles and books written on the subject. So it will be useful for your research. If you are a research student, this will also be very useful. And then we have Buddhist connections in the Indian Ocean changes uh, in monastic mobility. This is a pretty good age, like 1000 to 1500. Co Cornell University. Uh, so uh, also it's um, recommended you read the abstract at least, you know, uh, if you read the abstract, that will definitely give you some good idea. Plus these keywords, if you have, also will be you see just keyword Buddhism, Buddhist chronicles, Buddhist networks, mm -hmm. Indian Ocean and Sri Lanka. So we get some pretty much, uh, you know, an overall idea of uh, what the article is all about. Since the 19th century Buddhists residing in the present day nations of Myanmar, Thailand and Sri Lanka have thought of themselves as participants in a shared Southern Asian Buddhist world characterized by a long and continuous history 
of integration across the Bay of Bengal region dating at least to the 3rd century BCE reign of the Indic king Ashoka. So this is about all the three, four countries. Uh, these three countries are actually major Theravada Buddhist countries. Recently, scholars of Buddhism and historians of the region have begun to develop a more historically variegated account of Buddhism in South and Southeast Asia using epigraphic art, historical and archeological evidence, as well as new interpretations of Buddhist uh, chronicle text. Uh, okay, here we go. Um, can you see this number here? Me. Okay, over here, can you see this number? Yeah, so this is number one, that is a footnote number. Okay, this one. So chronicle, what is a chronicle? Chronicle is a term of art uh, used here to refer collectively to tracks composed in Pali or local literally uh, literary vernacular languages derived directly or indirectly from the Pali language Wangsa, genre popularized in Sri Lanka, now Lanka or now Sri Lanka. Uh, so we do have quite a few um, chronicles. Um, for example, Mahavansa, the Great Chronicle, which was written uh, written fifth century AD, very um, uh, early text, and there are uh, large number of uh, chronicles I, like this, you, which uh, knows, actually this book, uh, Mahavansa, uh, is one of the the longest continuing books. Uh, uh, in the world, so it is still being written. There is a there is a separate uh, panel. Even today, they write the to continue to write the uh, historical important historical uh, events uh, in uh, Sri Lanka. Even today, they they write. It, it is written in Pali. So the uh, the literature, this chronicle literature, are uh, really important. Okay, so have a look uh, about this um, for your research paper. I, I want to just give you some idea. I think this one, historic, uh, historiography, Thailand, uh, British Encyclopedia of Buddhism. So this is an encyclopedic article, uh, which should be a pretty good one because uh, encyclopedic articles uh, normally um, covers a lot of information and uh, depends on actually the quality of the, the encyclopedia too. So this is, this is uh, still a simple one, looks like a simple one about Thailand, but uh, really uh, pretty useful uh, if you read this. So such languages, uh, genres, um, uh, reciters, scribers, chroniclers and chronicles and we just talked about chronicles right now, Pali chronicles and histories of the Buddhas. And so this encyclopedic article about Thailand, vernacular Buddhist historiography, um, so can also be useful for you. And here we also see that uh, uh, primary uh, sources in the bibliography and the secondary literature. For example, as I said there, Anagata once a chronicle and this ka, Kam Hai Khan, so uh, oh, Dina Kala Mali and this uh, Mula Sasana and then Patama Sambodhi, this, these are primary sources. Uh, very early, uh, Saddhamma Sangha, these are all actually very early primary sources and these are the the later secondary uh, resources. So if you are into more uh, serious uh, studies, especially postgraduate studies, uh, learning a little bit about this uh, difference between primary sources and secondary sources can be pretty useful. Uh, uh, any of you know about uh, Zotero? There is something called Zotero. Do you know that? Maybe, um, yeah, this is a pretty good one. If you have that app, that will really help you uh, maintain uh, um, um, research sources. 
i'll show you later on uh, if i have time i'll definitely show you uh, how uh, about that how to do that okay and then paul williams and anthony with anthony tribe i think i have shown you this one before about the buddhist but a complete introduction to the indian tradition and here we have a good uh, um, coverage of the uh, the buddhist thought uh, complete introduction uh, here again i will just show you only the content over here the doctrinal position of the buddhist buddha in context and then the mainstream buddhism the basic thought of the buddha and we can see the basic thoughts like the four noble truths the not self dependent origination and the karma and um yeah buddhist meditation and abhidhamma and then the nature of uh, and origin of mahayana buddhism some schools of mainstream buddhist thought these are very important uh, for our topic actually sarvastivada sautrantika theravada pugalavada and maha sanghikas mahayana philosophy also is there here pragna paramita madhyamaka yoga chara the buddha nature tathagata garbha and then buddha in mahayana buddhism and who is a buddha it's not necessarily i think identical with the theravada uh, version so you can also get some idea about uh, the buddha buddha uh, the three kayas for example um mantrayana or vajrayana tantric buddhism in india yeah so this book also uh, can be helpful to some of you so keep these uh, uh, books in your library and this is early buddhism so some credible canonical texts about the early so canonical text if we say it is actually the early uh, buddhist text uh, so these are supposed to be uh, we call it original text and age old text so these are important texts so some critical uh, credible canonical texts uh, about early buddhism uh, let's go ahead and have a look at the okay yeah yeah so this book uh, this is actually is an article and here again we have a footnote here i'll uh, definitely show you how it is done and here you can see the the author and in this uh, footnote we can also see uh, the 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 year of publication and the page numbers of this article so unless otherwise indicated i translate the chinese versions from uh, bareus 1963 french translations translations of the majjhima nikaya by bikkhu bodh in 2009 so this is just a, a reference cross reference okay so have a look at this one if you also find it uh, useful for your research paper Uh, early buddhism i think that will be very useful to for some and uh, this again is another book on early uh, buddhist uh, teaching collection of early buddhist material not found in the pali nikayas and chinese sagamas so <clears throat> very very cool gandhara text okay and tibetan text and sanskrit text uh, again mula sarvastivada vinaya oh wow this is a uh, pretty uh, useful one to uh, mahavastu maha sanghika prati moksha prati moksha is the code of conduct uh, what we call vinaya um, uh, this is a um, pretty good one for uh, mahayana students uh, from uh, buddha charita saundarananda i have done this uh, sanskrit book before mahayana texts are there here okay so this book uh, is also recommended uh, if you want to learn more more about more about the mahayana uh, side and here um, early history historic 
Gujarat and the trading world of the Western Indian Ocean. So Gujarat is a, is a state in India and um, which is supposed to be a uh, good state uh, in business activities. A lot of businessmen have come from that state. Even today, Gujarat is uh, um, boasting of uh, uh, producing more and more business people. So it has a history already, uh, even in the ancient past. And this one uh, maybe will be helpful, not necessarily Buddhist, but uh, some of those activities, when we talk about those fourth century BC, you see, um, um, that uh, is really a uh, long time ago. And uh, if you see those activities that we can also get some idea about uh, how they have done uh, maritime networks. Okay, maritime, we talk about maritime Buddhism and uh, actually, as I mentioned last time, Professor Louis Lancaster is a champion of uh, maritime Buddhism uh, in the world today. And uh, one of my professors, he, uh, he actually has uh, uh, done a lot of uh, researches on this uh, subject. Uh, maybe I will... Um, yeah, Dr. Louis Lancaster. Maybe I'll show you in the uh, in, uh, Dr. Louis Lancaster. He is eighty-eight years old. Please have a look at. Okay, uh, you can Google about this uh, man. Very important if you uh, are going to talk about uh, um, in maritime. Buddhism, he argues that um, Buddhist activities have happened through maritime trade. A lot of uh, traders in the past when they were doing business in different parts of the world, uh, they also actually uh, brought with them or took some uh, Buddhist monks and also um, uh, some, uh, some certain things. Um, Buddhist monuments. So Greek on coins and the early polities. And we can see uh, some uh, uh, Arabian <clears throat> coins and some other material uh, from the Arabian world in the, in the Chinese uh, mainland China in different ports. And then some ceramic uh, in uh, China, uh, they are found in uh, Arabian cities or Middle East. Uh, so when we see that, it suggests that uh, we did have a lot of uh, um, activities between those traders. And actually they also um, wanted to, uh, for safety, you know, everyone, especially when you travel, you need uh, more safety and blessing for from different religions. If you belong to certain religious um, tradition, you want to have some uh, blessing from them as you are traveling for months and months. So uh, it was important for them to have some uh, blessing from their um, respective religions. That's how the other religions also um, migrated to different countries. So Buddhism had uh, the same thing. Buddhism was actually uh, pretty predominantly was spreading in outside uh, India and in mainland China and in, in far eastern countries, Southeast Asia, South Asia, everywhere, even in the, the eastern countries, even in Iran, um, you can see um, some Middle East countries uh, through the Silk Route, if you see so many Buddhist uh, uh, monuments are there. So uh, that is the story of uh, how uh, traders actually have migrated with uh, Buddhism. Okay, and then we'll go to, this is number 10, we have a few more. Early historical and archaeological traditions of Christianity in Greater India, reality and hagiography. So this is basically about Christianity uh, but this also can uh, 
give you some idea, especially in the, this is about the um, colonial period again. For example, the uh, Portuguese came to Sri Lanka in uh, 1505, 1505, and then uh, Dutch came to Sri Lanka in 1656 something, and then uh, the Western, I um, mean the British people, they came uh, and uh, took over uh, this small island over here, little island. Uh, so uh, Britishers were controlling Sri Lanka from uh, 17, uh, 90 something and 1815, they actually took over the entire country and until February 4th, 1948, uh, Britishers were ruling Sri Lanka. So from 1505, to 1948, we had the colonial period. Uh, so the, there were a lot of impact on the Western, uh, on the Sri Lankan soil by the, the Western um, countries. And then India is uh, also was controlled by uh, these uh, uh, Western rulers. And many countries here we can see how this, uh, especially, you can see uh, all these country. the color here suggests that also related to the, close to the, the ocean. And most of them were involved in uh, business. So um, they are all pretty active in business activities. And uh, so those um, Western countries, sailors, they, uh, started uh, traveling. And so these archaeological um, monuments, archaeological uh, things like this, really very important. They, they talk actually a lot of things. Over here you can see uh, so many different uh, things. Uh, if we talk about the Particularly important uh, things. Same thing with the um, the other traditions. Uh, this is about Christianity. So Buddhism also. Uh, if you see like uh, Buddha statue or Buddha uh, picture in in coins, uh, there were some uh, coins like that. And this is about early Mahayana Buddhism by Mahendra Datta Jayadi. And here. Also, he talks about early Mahayana Buddhism. And uh, so this one can also be important as he talks about Buddhism, Buddhist councils, Mahayana and Buddha Vachana and the Sutra and the Bodhisattva. These are the keywords. <clears throat> Take a look at this article. It's Encyclopedia of Buddhism again. Um, Encyclopedia of World Religion. So this is about the Buddhism. Edward Irons. Uh, this book also will help you understand uh, for your research paper. I want to actually give you some idea about uh, how to get some information about your research paper. So hopefully this also will be very helpful to all of you. Buddhism and introduction and also maps are there, illustrations, tables, are uh, pretty important uh, chronology is also there and a bibliography of Buddhism and related Eastern Asian religions are there. So hopefully uh, this will also be, uh, be very helpful to all of you. So take a look at this uh, encyclopedia. This is number 12. And number 13, expansion of Buddhism during the Mauryas. As I mentioned before, this is an article about uh, um, uh, about the uh, the King Ashoka, Buddhism, Mauryan, Ashoka, trade, Bengal, archaeology, Dhamma, edicts, stupas, and viharas. So I think uh, you can uh, get some more idea about uh, the contribution of Ashoka. As I mentioned, read the abstract, get some idea about the, uh, the entire article, uh, which is also not so long, just a uh, 16 pages, 
So hopefully um, this will also be helpful to you. The paper would give background information for understanding the nature of the intense land and sea trade networks that the Buddhist Sanghas developed under the Mauryan. You see here, we talk about maritime Buddhism and land and sea trade networks that the Buddhist Sangha developed under the Mauryan. So King Ashoka sent those missionaries uh, to uh, nine destinations, as I mentioned before, and um, so get some idea about that and how uh, it was important. And uh, for your information, I would like to mention about uh, one uh, woman, um, the, a Buddhist nun called Sanghamitta. She was the daughter of King Ashoka here. And she came to Sri Lanka through uh, sea. There is a uh, passage uh, between India and Sri Lanka, sea passage. So she came uh, by a ship along with the sapling of a Bodhi tree, uh, the Bodhi tree from Buddha Gaya. So her arrival uh, took place in 327 BC, which is uh, pretty old. And um, Arahant Mahinda also came um, just before that. And that is uh, Theri Sangamitta's brother. So their arrival uh, can also be um, very important. And especially Sangamitta's uh, arrival, it is uh, very clear she came through the sea route. So again, for maritime trade, that's an important uh, uh, information. And then it is also said some Sri Lankan bhikkhunis went to mainland China and other South Asian countries and established uh, Buddhist nun, nuns uh, order uh, in those countries. And number 14 about uh, um, linking Khotan and uh, Dunghuan Buddhist narratives and in text and image. And I think this also will be, as I mentioned before, will be pretty useful. And here we have Mogao caves, auspicious statues, Khotan, Dunghuan, Buddhist narratives, transmission of Buddhism, localization of Buddhism, and Oxid Mountain. Um, this is again about uh, uh, Buddhist archaeology and uh, those uh, beautiful uh, caves, uh, really uh, important. This was presented at the ancient Central Asian Networks. Um, this paper was presented uh, by Christopher uh, Andre. So can be pretty uh, important. This is actually an extensive article. I mean, compared to those uh, little articles, shorter ones, this is uh, 62 pages. And uh, then Buddhism in Sri Lanka. If you want to learn about Sri Lankan history of Buddhism, uh, here we have uh, all the important uh, details. Um, short, but uh, I think uh, it's a good one for you to understand about uh, Buddhism in Sri Lanka. If any of you are interested in uh, talking about learning more or writing about uh, Buddhism in Sri Lanka, uh, this also is a good one. We just talked about Sanghamitta and the women disciples, arrival of sacred Bodhi tree. So it is uh, here. And King Ashoka and their communication, uh, again, uh, through maritime trade, uh, all these things happen. All right. And then there is another one. Um, uh, this is structure of monks, as I mentioned before. This 19-page uh, article on the structure of uh, origin of community means Sangha. So these are actually Buddhist monks. Yeah, introduction of Pali Tipitaka, and then uh, structure of Vinaya. Uh, so this is the Vinaya Pitaka. Um, and then, yeah, this is about the uh, code of conduct for monks and nuns. This is all about that, uh, this article.
um, yeah, can be useful to some seven kind of offense. This is all about the, the Vinay rules, so the code of conduct for Buddhist monks. And I think they are, this should be the last one, uh, teaching Dharma in new lands. I guess we discussed this one. Yeah. So uh, I don't have to, I think this was uh, done before. Yeah, we, we discussed about, this is an extra one. Maybe I will remove later on. Uh, so this is a repetition. Okay. Yeah, this is about the articles on, um, uh, articles and books that uh, will be useful for your research paper and also for uh, today's uh, paper. And I want to now uh, demonstrate. Okay, so far, do you have any questions so far? Uh, please ask me or you can even chat and I can <laughs> uh, okay before that I will if you have any question please uh, feel free to ask me okay um, let me uh, okay no question is good for me <laughs> That means you are very bright students, I think. <laughs> okay, can you see this uh, this document over here? I, I see someone is driving, be careful, okay? <laughs> Don't look at the screen while driving. <laughs> um, okay, can you see this uh, uh, document that I'm sharing? I'm going to demonstrate how to write uh, how to write a footnote, how to include a footnote, let's say. How to include a footnote. Okay. Um, can everyone see this? Yes or no? No, I can't. Now you can. I can't see. Now you can, right? No, I can't. You sure? I think you can now. I can see. I that. know the video is stuck. Oh, video is stuck? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's, uh, but uh, I know it is still there. You can see somehow. Later on, I will okay. share the video. Hopefully, you can see. Okay, okay. so here, how to include a footnote. Uh, are you familiar with that? Okay, let's say uh, now we have some books we have learned. Okay, let's say um, over here we have a book. Uh, last time I, I showed you. Uh, we studied a book called What the Buddha Taught by Walpola Rahula, right? And let's say we have uh, something uh, in, our, in our research. And if I want to include the footnote, let me see. Um, Rahula in his book mentioned uh, briefly about the uh, important teaching. Oh. Buddha. Okay, so uh, now here I want to add a footnote. Can anyone suggest me how to do that? If anyone of you know. You need to put the number. Yeah, how do you put that? It, it depends what number did you give to that riff. Okay, let's say number one. 
Okay. Yes. So you put just number one on no. the inside the parentheses. Also. No, it should be above the. Yeah. Actually, um, so we just don't put the number like this. You think like this? Is that what you mean? Over here? No, no, it's not like that. So how do you do that? Um, so that's why I wanted to actually demonstrate this one. So in the, in the Word document, um, we'll just delete this, okay? And in the Word document, you can see here, can you see this? Home, insert, draw. Yeah, uh, and then how to insert? That's my question. And design layout references. You go to references, okay? So let's say I want to include this um, footnote number over here at the end of this sentence. And then uh, you click here and then you go to references, okay? And when you see the references, can you see footnote? Insert footnote, okay? Over here, you can see insert footnote. And if you click here, you will go to the footnote number right away. Okay. So let's say now you know uh, Rahul. We have to write like that Rahul and then Walpole and his book. As I mentioned, we have to write the, the title in italics. What the Buddha taught, right? And let's say the book was, um, this is not necessarily uh, correct information, but I just wanted to, okay, this should not be uh, italics now. So Colombo, if I mention, that is the place of publication. Um, let's see, we need, uh, uh, some, uh, well, then, okay, this is the publisher. Okay, Samay Vardhana Publisher. Just, I, I just give you an example on it. And then uh, Colombo is the place of publication. And let's say 1956, uh, he wrote the book. And then that is the year. And then the page number, let's uh, write the page number P uh, 100 and Seven. So this information should be included in your footnote, okay? If it is a book that you cite. And, and if you go now over here to this number one, if you click, if you double click, you can go right away to that uh, original place. And then if you take the cursor over here, you should be able to see the the footnote reference. That is uh, over here, it should actually pop up. Uh, yes, over here, can you see? Yeah, so that means it is properly inserted. Footnote is properly inserted. So how do we do that? We need the uh, author, okay, number one, and let me, Okay, number one, the author. And number two, title, right? What is number three? Number three? Publisher. Publisher. Yes, number four? Date. Date? Yeah, place of publish publication, right? And then number five? Date. 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 Date of publication, yeah. And next one? Page. Last page. one? Page, number of page. 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 Yes, very good. Yes, so this is how we, we cite. And um, um, 
as I mentioned, I want to show you how I used Zotero, a wonderful app that is uh, used by many scholars in the world. And um, if any of you uh, want to learn about this, um, here we go, we have this Zotero. This is Zotero. Can you see this? I think you can, right? I think I have to share again. Let me share again. Okay, let me share over here. Okay, I'll show you now. Okay, can you see now? Over here? Yeah, this is the yes. Zotero app, okay? And I have already installed in my computer and I show you how I use um, these are all actually library. I have created these all books by, all by myself. I actually downloaded from the internet. And for example, I want to, um, these are different uh, uh, classes that I have taught and you can see these are different classes. And if I want to get some information about Indian Buddhism, I can go to this library over here. We already are, um, uh, familiar with this book, uh, 2,500 Years of Buddhism by Bapat. And um, uh, let's say I want to get, um, uh, refer to this book, 2,500 Years of Buddhism. And then, okay, now um, now I go back to the my Word document, okay? Let's say over here, um, Okay, I'll go back here. I write something. Um, 2,500 years of Buddhism. Okay. And now I want to, uh, I'll show you uh, an easy way that I use here. Okay. I don't have to type many. I, it will be very easy. What I do is I go to, can you see here? Zotero. Okay. Hopefully in your Word document, you don't have it because you have not installed it, but I can go to Zotero. And here I can add a, a citation and a bibliography. And I recommend you do it. You try to uh, install it. It will be really, really uh, save so much of your time and you'll become real good academic uh, if you do that. And so I here add a citation, okay? Add citation, maybe it takes a little bit time. Oh yeah, it is here already. Uh, okay, over here, okay, this is pretty cool. You can see here um, different citation styles. So I want to actually use uh, Chicago Manual of Style, 17th edition, full note. Or if I want to use uh, any other citation style, like uh, um, I have already shared with you some other citation style. Modern Humanities Research Association, uh, this and Harvard uh, uh, style. So I'm going to I'm going to use this Chicago uh, Manual of Style, 17th edition, and then OK. And now I go uh, over here to Zotero, and I I'm going to Classic View, and then I am taken uh, to the library here. Okay, so I'm talking about uh, 2,500 years of Buddhism, and this is the book that I want. And then uh, now uh, I have, let's say, I have referred to page number 230. So I just add page number here. And, and when I click OK, you see what the magic happens. Okay, now I just actually included uh, page number two and see what happened here. 
can you see? Yeah, uh, this is the whole information. Um, P. V. Bapper, two thousand five hundred years of Buddhism, publication division, Ministry of. So all the information is here and uh, place of publication, year of publication, and the page number. Everything is there. Pretty easy, okay? And uh, uh, I want to show you how to create the uh, bibliography. So let me uh, use another book so that I can create. A, let's say um, hmm, uh, ethics in early Buddhism. Okay, Indian Buddhism. So we we talked about Indian Buddhism. Let's say inscriptions of Ceylon. Okay, I'll. I just type the book title, uh, Inscriptions of Ceylon. Ceylon actually is uh, a former name uh, used by the Britishers uh, to name Sri Lanka. So right now, again, I go to, uh, I want to include the footnote. If you don't have Sotero, uh, you have to go to references and you have to go to insert, okay? And then you have to manually include all the information, right? And now uh, what I'm doing is I'm using Zotero instead and see what happens. Okay, now I can easily go to Zotero and here. Okay. Okay, over here, I'm going to classic view and then I'm taken to the, uh, my library. And what was the book I was talking about? Um, I think I was talking about uh, inscriptions of Ceylon something, right? Yeah, let me check. Yeah, inscriptions of Ceylon. Okay, over here, this one. This is the book. So I click, I click once. And if I click double, I can get more information. And so if it is a, if it is a book, I just go to the page. But if it is a book, chapter, column, figure, issue, all, all different uh, uh, variations are there. Let's say now this is page number 36. Okay, I just click page number 36. And now you can see pretty easy and everything about the book is here, okay? So that is why I say this book saves you so much of time. And the most beautiful thing is uh, about this is, um, and let's say now I have written the article, I have completed my article and then I want to go uh, to my bibliography. Okay, what's your question? Okay, my question was like uh, it's uh, like it's like more in-text uh, citations and the method that you're giving. So if you put inside like in-text uh, citation, did you also uh, put, uh, need to include the references as well again at the end? Uh, when you go to the bibliography, right? Yeah. So if you I'm, have, if you have, uh, this is uh, in between the article. This is in between the article. This is called footnote. Okay. okay. And later on, uh, we get, so this also includes all the page numbers and everything. And later on, we have to include the bibliography. And mm. that is the, the collection of all the articles that you have written and uh, used. Oh. And how do we do it here? Pretty easy in the Sotero. What we do is go to bibliography. Okay. And I think, yeah. Okay, over here, <laughs> you just click and within seconds, the, the whole thing appears here. Can you see that? So this is the, and also it is automatically uh, organized in uh, um, alphabetical order, okay? 
so even if you have written like i have i have written so many articles and i um, actually done uh, many things like this so i don't have to worry too much i uh, just click here i luckily i have all the uh, the zotero uh, library this have to be done uh, you know at the beginning so all these books uh, all these articles uh, everything about this i have done uh, before so i have them ready so whenever i want to um, get some information um, i get the book i i find the citation and i click here i include the page number and everything um, just appears uh, within seconds uh, that's why it's really uh, important so oh yeah so okay so what i do is i'll show you how we do it like let's say um, actually i go to my university library you go to university library let's say um, uh, okay in google uh, for example if you cite a book uh, if you write uh, go to google scholar i think google scholar uh, is a good one okay google scholar citations okay and this is google scholar citations i think uh, you know about google but hopefully you don't know much about google citations right so you can find many information about uh, google citations and here we can see uh, we actually have to uh, give this information and um, verify all these things and then uh, it will take you uh, to this is my actually university library i'm going to and uh, this is university of the west library so here oh, this goes uh, i think i'll go to just google i just show you how it is done maybe just west because you don't have the access to the university and i just go to google and let's say what the good the taught okay what the taught but the taught by valpola rahul okay so let's see um over here and when you click on this uh you should can you see this um uh, little icon here so in zotero what we do is we click on this icon and then uh so i can select the uh, my library and uh, my um, different my, uh, uh, data sources are there data collection are there so i just go to let's say uh let's say buddhist uh, ethics okay i click on this buddhist ethics and then i just enter and then i should be able to find that book over there in zotero okay right here you can see here right can you see so when you click here uh, you also get all the information uh, over here we can see a web page the full name and all this stuff and if it is a proper book it will be like this if it is an article it will be like this okay so they are different and um, that's how we actually include uh, a book uh, to the the library so uh, very very useful one for research scholars um, if you have any question let me know and try to um, uh, try to install this this uh, app sotero okay yeah um, include uh, install this app this will be 
uh, very, very helpful to all of you. Install Sotero app. This will be very, very useful to all of you. It will save tons of your time and your academic credentials will increase, uh, increase uh, leaps and bounds uh, that way. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's about uh, uh, how to write a research paper. And uh, I also have written uh, an article about uh, Buddhist meditation in uh, academia. And uh, maybe let me see if I can find that. Um, yeah, if I can find it, I show you and how uh, we also write an article. Hopefully I can find here. Um, okay, maybe I'll show you from my, okay, over here. Okay, maybe this one. I don't know if I have, okay, I have some footnotes here. But this is not a complete uh, article. Uh, this is part of my research, in fact. Uh, yeah, you can see all these articles. Um, I can use this uh, through my Zotero and it's really important. Um, I have done an article on Buddhist meditation in academia. Maybe I'll share it later on. Can find it right away. Okay, so um, do you have any question to ask? Is everything okay? Now is the time for you to ask some questions, if any. If no, we meet, we meet uh, next uh, week. <laughs> okay. And um, um, so come prepared and please, uh, please rehearse yourself. Uh, manage your timing, seven minutes. Um, we will do the presentation. And I also want you to write your article on um, any of the topics that you have done, um, you are comfortable with uh, uh, out of any of the topics so far, you select any of the topics and then write an article on that. And you can of course complete your article, final uh, paper, submit all the assignments uh, before 21st. December. I'll give you one extra week for you to complete uh, everything and uh, let me know if you still have any question. And um, so um, with that, uh, we can, on the basis of your article, you do the presentation and you have to um, upload your PPT um, before 12th. Okay, 12th. December 10 p.m. I have given the time. So before that, try to upload your article. That will be um, important. And then you can just uh, take a look and uh, do some rehearse. And that will be the final presentation. And hopefully you all will do well. Okay, good luck with your presentation. Good luck with your finals and I hope and wish you all the very best of luck. Thank you. And see you again next week. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs> okay, just a second. And uh, I would like to take a picture if possible. I'll take a picture, okay?
<laughs> can I take a picture? All right, I, I'll show you to our university, our students, okay? <laughs> uh, all right, so we have 13 students here, okay. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your time. And again, good luck to all of you. See you again next week. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.